Hi everyone and welcome to today's Faith Moment. John's going to be back with us next Wednesday. Today I wanted just to think for a moment about God's promise of renewing our strength. These times don't need to be mentioned because they're, they're difficult, they're hard. And for all of us, there's a need to re rely on God in a way that's maybe deeper than we have for many years. And I want to share some thoughts with you. And I've called it Strength Renewed because in the scriptures, there are many promises of God being with us in difficult times, in hard times, and of helping to make things different. Not always a situation, but what happens in our heart is different. And I've taken some verses, very well-known verses from Isaiah 40, some of my favourites. And you may be like me, I'm digging into some of my favourite verses at the moment, just going deeper and remembering things that God said in the past. Isaiah 40 is set in the context when God's people are questioning and saying, where are you, God? Have you forgotten about us? Do you know what's going on? And God replies, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Just catch the beauty of these words. The Lord is the everlasting God, first and the last, the beginning and the end. The creator of the ends of the earth. There's nothing hidden from him. He's the creator of all. He doesn't faint or grow weary, even when we do. And his understanding is unsearchable. Put there a picture of a young child just trying to swim in the ocean. And if you've ever done that, it's beautiful because you can never get to the bottom. You can never get to the sides. But the swimming is fantastic. We can never get to the bottom of understanding God or the sides. But the... Trying to do it is fantastic. It's wonderful just to try to search some of these deeper things of God. He goes on. He, goes, he gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. And this is where I'm heading to. I'm heading towards somewhere. Just, just stay with me. There's much weariness around at the moment. There's concern as the schools go back, and for some of them today, for some of them yesterday. There's tiredness for families, there's tiredness for those who are more alone, there's tiredness for those in the workplace, there's all sorts of weariness around. And God promises that he gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. In these words, God recognises that there's going to be a time when we do feel faint and we do feel powerless. It's not wrong to feel that. And God promises that he will give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless, but there's more. He says that even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. Even young people will get tired and faint, weary, and the young will fall exhausted. God knows what this life is like. He knows what it's like being through the generations through history. In a sense, this is not new what we're experiencing today. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But there's a but, this is where my heart leaps. But, God says, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And I love these books in the Bible. God's painted a picture of weariness, of tiredness, of difficulty. And then he says, but those who wait for the Lord. I'm just praying that this but will be my but today and your but today. And we think, yes, we know what's going on. And actually, yes, yes, yes. But God promises. And when God promises, it's eternal. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. There's no question about it. It shall happen. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles, the strongest that they can be. They'll run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is God's promise to you and to me. There's a but in everything that's going on today, but those who wait for the Lord. And I want to just focus on these few words now for a moment. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. How do you wait for the Lord? How do I wait for the Lord? Now, it's going to be different for each of us because it depends a bit on your journey with God, what you're like as a person. I think for me personally, one of the ways that I don't wait on the Lord is watching television, feeling sorry for myself, going into a stupid, because actually it doesn't renew you. And that's part of sometimes the difficulties at Christmas that go into a sort of a, a quieter space. But unless it's used well, it doesn't actually renew us. It just makes us heavier. How do we wait for the Lord? It's going to be different for you and for me. Uh, for some of us, we wait for the Lord by putting worship music on. And this doesn't have to be... When we talk about waiting for the Lord, it's not meaning that you've got hours and hours and hours to spend. Some of us do have that, but others of us don't. We're running, rushing, juggling, handling. Waiting for the Lord doesn't have to be something that's different to life. You're waiting for the Lord in life, but it's how do you do that? It may be that you put worship music on in the car as you're traveling. It may be that you have music playing in the house or in the home or before you start working from home. It may be that you do that. It may be that you take time with God in scripture and it doesn't have to be a massive amount of time because some of us don't have that, but take moments, take bite-sized pieces as you eat on God's word, as you take a few verses, use Bible reading notes, but wait for the Lord, be practical, wait for the Lord. And what he's trying to do is just turn our heads away from all that's going on around us to look to him just in that moment. Waiting for the Lord may be just a cry of help in prayer. Lord, help me today. Lord, help me tonight. Lord, help me. The kids are winding me up. Lord, help me. I feel alone. Lord, waiting for the Lord is turning to him in whatever way you know works for you. If you don't know what works for you yet, then find some way to put worship music on, get Bible notes. Word for today is a fantastic thing to use. If you, if you haven't got a physical copy, just Google Word for Today UCB. That's UCB and it'll come up or drop me online and I'll send you a link. But they're free Bible bites for every day that just help you to wait for the Lord. And I was thinking for myself, I wanted to pull another verse in from Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my salvation comes from him. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. Personally, I found that I've wanted to be quieter with God, not necessarily doing nothing, but just be quieter in some of my prayer, in some of my thinking, in some of my activity. Just be quieter in my heart, not rushing in my head, trying to understand or making sense, but being quieter somewhere deeper inside, in my soul. My soul waits in silence, doesn't try to understand, doesn't try to pretend it's okay when it's not. My soul just waits in silence. And when you come to that place when there's nothing else you can do to try and make it any better for yourself or for those around you, and you just say, God, my soul waits for you. It's a super place to be because that's when we find him. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. Those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. Get into that place of just almost giving up trying to do it ourselves and allowing our hearts, our souls to wait for God. That's a very safe place to be because his promise is that he comes again and again and again every day to those who wait for him. So my invitation to myself and to you today is how are you going to wait for the Lord today? 
in the next thing that you're going to need to do? How will you wait for the Lord? How will you turn your mind, your heart, your soul to him? It may be that you put some worship music on. It may be that you grab the Bible and just take some Bible bites. Use Bible verses. They're very good. UCB is fantastic. Word for today or any others that you use. Wait for the Lord in any way that works for you. For some of us, it's exercise. For some of us, it's wait for the Lord in the garden. Just walk outside and have a look and see what he's doing. But turn your heart and your attention to him in this time. These verses were written by those who thought that God had forgotten them. He didn't know what was going on. Where is he? And God reminds them. Those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall not grow weary and they shall not grow faint. I'm just going to say a prayer now. And my prayer is, Father, that as your children, you help us to wait for you today. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, God keep you as we journey together. Amen.